Welcome to the Derek Loudermilk Show. This is episode six in the Five Levels of Abundance series, and this is actually the sixth level, the secret level of abundance, and that is world-class relationships, how to build a world-class network, because that enables you to access all other levels of abundance. So let's recap. Our levels of abundance are money, of course. That's the first thing that everybody thinks about. Barter, access to ideas and creativity. And then there's luck, synchronicity, being in the right place at the right time, having things go your way. And of course, gifts, receiving exactly what you need. Because remember our definition of abundance is being able to do what you need to do when you need to do it. And all of these together combine to do what you need to do. We can also make sure we say, do what you want when you want to do it. Because need and want, let's, t- let's take both. Need and want, you got abundance. All right, but maybe you've been thinking about this the whole time and I haven't mentioned it yet. But there's one thing that allows you access to all of these and that is your network. Facilitation of getting paid, getting customers, exchanging you know, trade with people, somebody giving you a gift, all these things, you have to have another person in the equation. In fact, usually there's exactly one person that can give you the very thing you want. You want advice, you want somebody to sell you a car, you want somebody to hire you, you want somebody to any of these things. There's a person that can actually do that for you. So there's always people involved here. And I'm going to tell you how you can optimize your network and really build a world-class network that's going to get you all of these things much easier and much quicker. See, here's the thing that most people naturally do, their network. And you probably have heard the term, your network is your net worth. Well, the thing is, most of us connect with other people who are already like us. These are the people at your school, at your job, in your softball league. These are the people you live next door to, people that you're naturally going to encounter, people that you sit next to at work, right? These are the people that sort of just fall into your sphere just by proximity, just because you're living your life, right? And so that's the the way of doing it without putting in every any extra thought or effort or strategic thinking about this. You just get what you get. And those are the people in your life. Now, the other way to do it is to actively cultivate relationships, to go out and meet the people you want to meet, to have friendships with the people that you really want to be friends with, to have relationships and mentorship and connections with people that you really want in your network and to go about it with dedication and generosity and building the network that you want. That's how to build a world-class network. That's how I know uh, billionaires and Olympians and successful entrepreneurs and explorers and people who have been on this podcast and people that I see all around my city. That's how I get to have such amazing relationships. Now, I want you to think about your network as as being, you know, if this is going to help you be more abundant, you need an abundant network. And so there's three qualities here. You want a broad, deep, and resilient, robust network. And what I mean is you want to have people in your network that are in different careers than you, that are older than you, that are younger than you, that are different socioeconomic levels than you, probably from different countries. You want a lot of diversity in your network. So here's an example. I do a lot of bike racing, a lot of cycling. And in my community of cyclists, there's a lot of sameness to some degree. Uh, It's it's a lot of white guys, right? A lot of well-educated, usually financially well-off white guys. But I'm often riding with people a generation above me and a generation below me. So I have friends that are both 30 years older than me and 20 or 30 years younger than me and across the whole spectrum. So I'm getting diversity in age from cycling. Now, if you take another cross section of my network, friends that I've made in developing countries, you know, places like Indonesia and Thailand and well, Portugal is not developing, but Croatia, I have communities of friends all over the world that have completely different 
geopolitical, socioeconomic backgrounds. So they're giving me cultural, socioeconomic diversity within my relationships. And we talked about in one of the previous abundance episodes of, you know, going to acquire skills that you can use then for barter. But let's say you go to, uh, you know, a cooking school or baking school or, or to learn some, you know, fire building survival skills or something like that, right? There's going to be a new community of people. So it's actually a great way to tie in is to go learn something new, go have an adventure, a new experience, and it's going to expose you to a whole new set of people. And usually there's, you know, one or two people that you're really going to hit it off with. You're going to connect in some way and you can, you can selectively say, I want to cultivate a friendship with this person. I want them to be in my network. And it takes a little bit of attention, right? You need to, uh, maybe you need to be inviting them to do things at first, or maybe you need to be, uh, you know, putting in a little bit of effort to kickstart the relationship off. But that's how friendship works. You know, it takes a little bit of work to um, be generous, to build trust, to include people in your life. So I'll tell you another story of what being abundant in relationships looked like. And I might have mentioned this in the, in the ideas episode, but uh, there was a time when the History Channel approached me to lead a TV show, to host a TV show about adventure. And it was going to be filmed in different locations around the world. And I thought that would be really cool. I would like to be a TV host. But they were interviewing several candidates and I wanted to prepare as best I could. And so I just happened to know a couple of other people that have hosted their own TV show and they're in my network and I could call them and they responded right away. And so this is what I mean by a robust network and a deep network. It wasn't just that I knew one person who had hosted a TV show. I knew two or three, right? So it's a little bit deep. And because I had cultivated these friendships, because I had been generous with them and continued communicating with them, I was able to just send them an email or pick up the phone and call them. And they were all able to advise me on and walk me through. Here's how you can be successful in an interview to host a TV show. So I got, uh, I got them to reply. So that's what the robustness is. People in your network will actually call you back, which is really important. Because let's say you have a legal question and you have a couple lawyers in your network, but they're not really good at calling you back. So that's actually not going to help you get what you need when you need to do it, right? So that's not actually helping you be more abundant. So you want to make sure you've got the relationships in your network, but that people are responsive, right? That they're actively engaged in the relationship on their end as well. And when I talk about diversity in relationships, I'm also talking about diversity in the different professions, right? So if you have access in your network to a lawyer, a doctor, uh, the mayor or a local politician, uh, you, you know, a car mechanic, any number of different professions that you would want to be able to, if you needed to right away, pick up the phone and call for advice, right? Oh my gosh, I'm experiencing blank medical crazy symptom. Call your friend. It's a doctor. Hey, it's probably just a migraine. This, this happened to me. I was, uh, at high elevation in Colorado. We were attending this wedding at like 12,000 feet and I've never gotten a migraine before. And I was like, Am I having a stroke? What's going on? Uh, and I was able to call my college roommate who was in med school at the time, I believe. And uh, he said, you know, that's that's a migraine and here's here's what you do. Um, amazing, amazingly helpful to, to be able to have that, right? Now, even though I said, go out and find the relationships that you really want to have, it's also important to have solid relationships with the people in your communities, right? Your softball league, your neighbors, all these things. You can actively work on making those better as well. You know, complimenting them, acknowledging them, listening to them, seeing how you can be helpful, right? Shoveling the neighbor's uh, walkway when it's snowy. That's what, you know, the very first thing when we moved into our house, there was a big snowstorm and the neighbors on both sides of us are much older. And uh, I just shoveled a walk sort of even before they woke up. And that was their first experience of us as neighbors. Um, wow, that's kind of nice. You, you spent five minutes and shoveled my walk. But then it's much easier for us to, to say, you know, we, <laughs> we were planning this trip on vacation and we had forgotten to find someone who's going to take care of our cat. And on the very last day, you know, we just texted the neighbors, oh my gosh, we're leaving for a few days. Uh, we forgot to think of someone who can feed the cat. Could you do it? 
and they text back, yeah, sure, you know, here's a key. And, and then right there returning the favor and it's very easy. And we've, you know, we've already established this relationship, right? We're both willing to help each other pretty much at any time. So if you're listening to this and you're thinking, wow, uh, I can see how my network is my net worth and I want to be more abundant. I want to have a world-class network. I want to have better relationships or I want to have a more robust and diverse network. What can you do? Uh, first of all, if there's relationships with people that you've already met, people that maybe have started to drift away, people that you met uh, at, at work functions or, or these things like that, rekindle the important relationships that you already have. Just circle back to them, you know, go back in your old text messages, your old emails, and see who you haven't talked to for a while that you think you really want to be friends with, that you really want to have in your relationships. And just check in with them, send them a message, send them a text. Hey, we'll love to hear what you're up to. Uh, you can even share a little bit about what you're up to. You know, just restart the relationship because you've already got them. Then you can take some time and map out, you know, what, where does my network have holes in it? You know, do I, do I not know anybody? I'm not friends with anybody who's older than me or anybody who's better educated than me or anybody who's from a different culture than me. Uh, or, you know, do I need uh, to have a couple more doctors <laughs> in my relationship or whatever it may be. Find where there's opportunity for you to go out and meet some people and bring people into your network, into your relationships that you want to have for the long term. And the, the important thing about this is that you're connecting with people that you want to be friends with. You're connecting with people for the long term, right? Don't start a relationship because you need something now. Start a relationship with somebody because you want to be friends with them for decades, right? And also spend a little time thinking about what you bring to the table, you know, how you can add value to other people. Uh, I already mentioned this in the barter and the skills episode, but you know, whatever it is, thinking about, again, the five minute favors, Adam Grant's concept of what can you do that doesn't take much time that can really help people out. You know, maybe it's reviewing their book on Amazon or, hey, even their podcast, if you're listening to this, or, you know, listening to them or bouncing ideas off of them or recommending them to someone that could, you know, setting them up with a business opportunity or whatever it might be, right? There's a lot of things you can do to start cultivating these relationships with the five minute favors. You know, do you have access to, you know, whatever college or university you went to, whatever your organization you're part of, you know, that's what you're bringing to the table. So, so be mindful of the value that you have to someone because people want to connect with you too. You have expertise, you have things to bring to the table. So you're looking for benefit in a relationship and other people learning for looking for benefit in a relationship. And there's, there's lots of great relationships out there waiting for you and are going to help you become much more abundant. And hopefully you're starting to see how it all fits together, how it can flow seamlessly from your relationships, all these different levels of abundance. If you want to go deeper, if you want to learn more about building a world-class network, which I've done over the years through these many countries and hosting you know, hundreds of interviews on my podcast, I have a course. You can check it out. Uh, I'll put links in the show notes. But before you even do that, I'd love for you just to get out there and try out some of the ideas from this series, from the five levels of abundance and from today. You know, what can you do to start rekindling old relationships, to add value to new relationships starting today? And really appreciate you joining me for this series. Any feedback can go to me, Derek, at DerekLoudermilk.com. That's my email. Uh, would love if you found this valuable and you think it might help somebody else, uh, please share it with them. Uh, you can help us out by leaving a review, giving us a five-star rating uh, if, if you got something from this. And thank you so much for your attention. And uh, go out there and test some of this stuff out.